anticipation just makes me skip a beat. I go, go back to being a really, a very shy, very lonely kind of kid. And uh, I remember being drawn to three things. First, of course, being drawn into music unnaturally. Another thing was flying kites, and another thing was motorcycles, even at that early age. I had it in my mind that one day I would be a musician, even at that early age. I remember consciously, you know, trying to sing songs that, I, that, that had really moved me, you know? I mean, songs by greats like Ray Charles and Nat King Cole and stuff. Even our neighbors knew me as a kind of singer. They, they called me Pocket Caruso. And uh, I had this strange fascination for music, and I used to hear all these albums that my father would bring. Uh, we had a great collection of LPs uh, from my father's collection, my mother's collection, later on my eldest brother, who started playing piano as well. Uh, so I, I, I was privy to a lot of great material on records, you know? And that, that served as a solid background for me because the first instrument I ever took up was, uh, I think like all good Parsi boys, the violin, which didn't work out. Then uh, I got obsessed by the trumpet, so my dad bought me a trumpet. my very, very early teens that I started thinking of singing very seriously. It was like a, a kind of call, you know, a very natural kind of calling. And I, I did take five years of Western classical training. Uh, to be a little technical, I'm actually a bass baritone, but I had this very wide range that's all the way from being a bass baritone right up to being, a, you know, singing in the tenor range. I did play in a band when I was 12 years old, but I used to play guitar, and I was too shy to sing. Fast forward to college years, I went to St. Xavier's College in Bombay, graduated in economics and politics, and uh, then eventually I went off to the States, where I think it all began for me, you know, singing in showcase theaters, nightclubs, and how it worked in those days was you, you had to stand in line and kind of draw a, a, a kind of number, you know? And according to the number, they'd give you, give you the time to come on and perform. And if the public liked you, they'd call you back. The idea being that you had to be discovered, you know? It was a really tough thing for a guy to do who had just like shifted out of Bombay and gone, gone to New York, you know. But that, I think in those couple of sessions that I, that I did, I, I probably picked up years of experience just in those, you know, just in those few weeks or months or whatever. Stayed in New York for many years where I used to sing fairly regularly. And I, I must say to, great, uh, to a great response, you know. They, first of all, when I'd get on stage, Judging by my accent, I'd be asked, where are you from? And I'd say, India. And, then, and they'd automatically take it for granted that I play sitar or flute or whatever, you know? And they'd ask me, what do you do, guy? And I'd say, I, I sing. What do you sing? And I'd say, Georgia on my mind, which was like, which is still one of my favorite songs. It's a song made famous by Ray Charles, my guru. And I think they'd really, really genuinely get shocked, you know, because their concept of India in those days was something completely different. Fast forward again, I did this demo with very, very high-powered musicians, you know, people who had played with the blood, sweat and tears. It, it was an amazing experience.